Muhammad Akbar from Bangalore, India. Recently, the topic depression was trending in the Indian social media after the death of the famous Bollywood actor Sushant Singh Rajput. He was found dead hanging from the ceiling fan in his home and had reportedly been suffering from depression for about six months. It is alleged that he committed suicide but the investigation is underway. I have following questions on depression after seeing various social media posts on it. Number one, is depression a disease? Many people say it is a disease and the common example given is the postpartum depression which some women experience after giving birth to a baby. Number two, if a person commits suicide due to depression, then will it be considered a sin as committing suicide is considered haram in Islam? And the third question he has posed is, what is the Islamic view of depression and how to deal with it? There's a similar question on a similar topic asked by Shawan from Bangladesh. A famous Bollywood non-Muslim actor named Sushant Singh Rajput committed suicide a few days ago. People all over the world, including Muslims, posting and sharing on social media, may his soul rest in peace. This is surely an indirect prayer for that person that may God grant him Jannah. Please, doctor, say something about this. A question on a similar topic by Suhail Azim from India. Allah says in the Quran, he does not lay a burden on a person greater than he or she can bear. Then why do people, whether Muslims or non-Muslims, why do they commit suicide? Replying to all these questions would require more than one and a half hour. It would require more than one complete session. I will try and answer in brief as much as I can. Let me confess to you that I was absolutely ignorant about this Bollywood actor, Sushant Singh Rajput. I'm hearing his name for the first time. And when I received this question from my team in the morning, I googled and I read and I came to know that Sushant Singh Rajput was a very famous Bollywood actor and he committed suicide by hanging six days ago, last Sunday, on the 14th of June 2020. And according to investigation, uh, the police says that he was suffering from depression for the past several months and there can be various causes that there was rivalry in his profession, various reasons, but he did commit suicide by hanging. And unfortunately, there are few hundred celebrities or maybe a thousand or more throughout the world, few thousand throughout the world, who are looked upon by tens of millions of people throughout the world. And we know that many of the actresses and actors, as well as many singers, they are considered to be as ideal by many of the human beings throughout the world. And they think and they strive to become like them. As though if they achieve what the actor has achieved or what the singer has achieved, they will achieve the objective of their life. Thinking that that is the best goal. Not knowing that many of these celebrities, to a great extent, they have depression and actually they don't have a very peaceful and happy life. It is only the glamour that you see on the screen. And unfortunately, many of the human beings, they follow them blindly and they spend their full life to become like them. Hardly, not even 1% of those people trying achieve even a small percentage of what these celebrities have achieved. The main purpose that they think they'll achieve happiness it's totally a misconception. Let me give you an example. There was an article that came more than two months back on the Daily Mail of UK on the 11th of April 2020. 
about two months back. And it gave a report of a survey that was done in the Mannheim University in Germany by a group of German psychologists. And they did a survey that which of groups of the people they are happy. And this survey, they interviewed 67,562 people. And this sample is very large. Normally they survey a couple of hundred or a couple of thousand, but here they interviewed 67,562 people. And they wanted to know who are the people who are the most satisfied. The survey was who are the people who are most satisfied with life. And in the survey they said that people who believed in a God or believed in religion were more happy than the people who did not believe in religion. So the least happy or the least satisfied amongst all the human beings in the world, they were the atheist. And the survey goes in in-depth and it says that among the religious people, the people following which religion are the most satisfied. And this survey said number one were the Muslims. The people who followed Islam, the Muslims were the most satisfied people in the world, followed by Christianity, followed by Buddhism, and last was Hinduism. Among the religious people, they said that the Muslims, the gap between the Muslims and the Christian was very vast. Not that the Christians were close second. The Muslims were the most satisfied. And today if we analyze the people that are looked down upon maximum amongst any religion, it is Islam. The, the religion which is maximum spoken against in the media today is Islam. The, the religion which is criticized maximum is Islam. The people who are harassed the most in the world are the Muslims. The people who are oppressed the most today in the world are the Muslims. The maximum negative factor by the media and all over the world, the society, is against Muslims and Islam. In spite of this, the survey said, and this survey wasn't done by Muslims, it was done by non-Muslims. This survey said that Muslims were the most satisfied people in the world because they believed in oneness. And the major factor for their happiness and satisfaction was Tawheed. Because the concept of God in Islam, the Tawheed, that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. And no one deserves to be worshipped. And the one who is all-powerful, all-knowing, all-wise is Allah, Almighty God. So because of this concept and the Muslims as a whole, they are the most, most practicing amongst all religious people. In numbers, Christians may be more who say we are Christians maybe about two and a half to three billion, but the Muslims are two billion, but the percentage of Muslims practicing is much higher than any other religious group. And because of the oneness, this group of psychologists, they rated them the highest. So Alhamdulillah. And this survey also said that the least rate of depression amongst any people are amongst the Muslims. And the least rate of suicide Amongst any people are the Muslims. And this survey was done by non-Muslims. So coming to it, we come to know that Islam has the solution to the problems of humankind. Coming to the basic question that the first question posed, that is depression a disease? And if someone commits suicide, is it haram? And what is the Islamic solution for it? For depression and for committing suicide. Regarding is depression a disease? Depression is mainly a mental disorder. Disease is a very definition. But it is not a disease that you get due to a germ or a bacteria or a virus. It's a mental disorder. And the reason for this mental disorder are various. One of the reasons for depression, it can be due to hormonal changes. It can be due to some enzymes that have been secreted by the brain. But the common cause is due to a personality trait 
and the most common is environmental. Environmental, that trace survey tells us that in India, the majority of the people that, that do suicide is mainly because of economic reasons. And you find a large number of farmers, they commit suicide. Then you have people due to being dissatisfied because of the job, because of rivalry in the profession. People commit suicide. There are students at a young age because of the depression of exams, they commit suicide. And according to the medical research today by the Mayo Clinic, they say that amongst the outpatient department who come for cure of depression, about 2% of people commit suicide. Among the inpatient department who admit themselves in the hospital because of depression, about 4% commit suicide. And on a whole, amongst the depressed people, amongst the men, 7% commit suicide, amongst women, only 1%. Coming to your question about the postpartum depression, yes, as I said, there are hormonal changes in the women due to menstruation, due to postpartum after delivery, and this can be the cause of depression, but the suicide rate due to depression amongst the women is much less. But amongst the people who commit suicide, according to statistics, 60% of the people who commit suicide, they commit suicide because of a mental disorder. And among these mental disorder, one of the highest rate is due to depression. So maybe one third or a little bit more than one third cases of the suicide, those who commit suicide may be due to depression. As I said, there are various other reasons. Regarding the second question, that is it haram to commit suicide because of depression or any other reason? Yes, in Islam, committing suicide is a major sin. According to Imam al dhabi in his book, Al-Qabair, the major sin, he says committing suicide is the 29th major sin in Islam. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 29 and verse number 30, that all those who kill themselves, Allah will put them into the hellfire. And the hadith of the beloved Prophet Muhammad is mentioned in the hadith of Tirmidhi, volume number 4, hadith number 2044, that our beloved Prophet Muhammad said that if anyone kills himself with iron or with an instrument or with a knife, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will put him into the hellfire and he'll keep on stabbing himself with the same instrument. And the hadith continues, if someone commits suicide by taking poison, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him do that thing, taking poison in hellfire continuously. So committing suicide is a major sin and it is haram in Islam. Regarding the third part of the question by the first questioner, that what is the Islamic solution for this? The Islamic solution for depression and for suicide is, Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Rad, chapter number 13, verse number 28, Verily, in the remembrance of Allah will hearts find satisfaction. So the survey which people are the most satisfied is the Muslim because the Muslim knows that verily in the remembrance of Allah will the hearts find satisfaction. So this is the solution for depression and for suicide. And Allah also says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah chapter 2 verse number 195 that do not make your own hands the cause of your own destruction that is saying that committing suicide is haram. And my father, may Allah grant him Jannah, he was one of the first Muslim psychiatrists in India and he was also the president of the Psychiatry Indian Association and he used to always say that the best treatment for a depressed person, for anxiety, it is the Quran. You read the Quran with understanding and inshallah your depression will be solved. And there are treatments of depression you can take antidepressant. One is a psychotherapy, talking. That is the best. Instead of talking, you let Allah talk to you. If Allah talks to you, He is the best cure in the world. He is the one who can cure. He is the best doctor. He is the best psychiatrist. So let Allah talk to you, that will be the best cure. And the third is the ECT, electroconvulsive therapy, where you put and you give shocks. 
But the best is the therapy that when a psychiatrist talks to you one to one, and the best talking can be done is by Allah. So the best solution is reading the Quran with understanding, with translation. I have given the talk on the topic, what is the purpose of life? And in this talk, I have described that every human being has a center. Some people are mainly society center. What will the society think about me? So they are most bothered about what will the friends and the society think about me? So they are trying to satisfy society. Some people are neighbor center. They are more involved in trying to prove that they are better than the neighbor. Some people are family centered. They are more bothered about their parents. Some people think that what their parents say is everything. So the main purpose of life is to satisfy the mother. Some people's purpose of life is to satisfy the father. So even if the mother speaks against Quran and Sunnah, if he's a Muslim, he will say no. Following the mother is important, not realizing that yes, obeying the mother is important. But if the mother speaks against Allah and his Rasul, at that time you don't listen to her. But that, that person is mother-centered. So you only want to satisfy the mother even though she goes against Allah and his Rasul. Some people are father-centered. Some people are children-centered. They are so much bothered that they want to see to it that their children are successful or they want to make their children maybe a celebrity or maybe a doctor. So whatever the children say, they will follow hook or by crook. They want to satisfy them. But a true Muslim, a true woman is a person who is Allah-centered. His life should be revolving around the commandments of Allah, the teachings of Allah and His Rasul, our beloved Prophet Muhammad If he is Allah-centered, and that what was our beloved Prophet, and the Sahabas, and the Khulfa Rashidin, they always, when they did any deed, they used to wonder, will Allah be happy or not? They are least bothered whether it will be against them or not. Will it be against their family or not? The first criteria was, will Allah and his Rasul be happy or not? So a true Muslim should be Allah-centered. If you are Allah-centered, and if you are centered around the teachings of the glorious Quran, and the Sahih Hadith of a beloved Prophet Muhammad inshallah, you can never be depressed. And as I said, depression is different from feeling grief or sad. A person can be sad if he goes lost in business, or if he goes, if he has a death in the family. But depression is a medical terminology. If that thing continues for two weeks or more, it's called a depression. So if someone dies, our beloved Prophet said, you can maximum grieve for three days. That also in limitation, you cannot go overboard. All these are teachings of a prophet because there's the will of Allah. So if you follow the teachings of the Quran, Inshallah, there is no question of you to be depressed. Because Quran has a solution to the problems of depression. The depression mainly comes is because of the anxiety, because you're always trying to satisfy maybe your neighbor or maybe trying to satisfy uh, uh, someone else, else in the society. So best solution is the Quran. And I've also given a talk on Quran the path to happiness. And in that I've said that there are various types of happiness. One is the false happiness, which a person can get if he has alcohol, or if he has drugs, it's a fake happiness. Just maybe for a few minutes or for a few hours. Then second is the temporary happiness. You may want to become rich and you may become rich, but then after that what? You may want to become actor and you become an after that what? But the real true happiness is everlasting happiness that can only be achieved is in Jannah. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Imran chapter 3, verse number 185, that every soul shall have a taste of death. And the final recompense is on the day of judgment. And anyone who is saved from the hellfire and enters the Jannah has achieved the objective of this world. For this world is nothing but mere chattels of deception. So the main objective of a Muslim is ultimate goal, ultimate happiness is Jannah. And before he reaches Jannah, the path to Jannah is also happiness. What you lead in this life. So the survey said that. The survey 
done in the Mannheim University in Germany by the non-Muslim uh, German psychologists, that what a satisfaction. The satisfaction that you have, even though the Muslims are ill-treated, they're oppressed, yet we find that they have faith in Allah. So because of that, their satisfaction level is very high. The happiness level is very high. And we find that the percentage of depression in the Muslim is the least. The percentage of suicide is the least. And a person who is more close to Allah and his Rasul, who follows more of the Quran and the Sunnah, he may have whatever problems in this world. He will not get depressed. There is no question of committing suicide because the Muslim knows it's a major sin. And the Muslim knows that this life is a test for the hereafter. As Allah says in the Quran in Surah Mulk, chapter number 67, verse number 2, Allah It is Allah who has created that and life to test which of you is good indeed. Come to the second question that many people after the actor uh, Sushant Singh Rajput died, many people said that may his soul rest in peace. And many Muslims said that. So can a Muslim say that? Doesn't it mean that doesn't it mean that we are saying that may you go to Jannah? When any human being dies, the best thing to say is Inna Lillahi Nirajun. From him we come, from Allah we come, from God we come, and to him we return, and to Almighty God we return. Even a Muslim dies, you can say that. Even if a non-Muslim dies, you can say that. And once there was uh, that procession going off a Jew, and the Prophet stood up when he saw that dead body passing. So the Sahaba said, but Ya Rasulullah, this is a Jew. So he said, yes, but he's a human being. And as we know, that from Allah we come, and to Allah we return. So the best thing that you can say when a non-Muslim dies is inna lillahi wa inna rajiun. From him we come and to him we return. For the Muslim, yes, you can pray for his akhira, you can pray uh, for his jannah. But for non-Muslim, from him we come and to him we return. And the third question opposes the question that when Allah says in the Quran that Allah does not lay on anyone a burden greater than he can bear. So the people are depressed because of burden. So isn't this again the verse of the Quran? What the question is referring to is the verse of the Quran, which is the last verse of Surah Baqarah, chapter number two, verse number 286, where Allah says in the starting of the verse, Allah does not lay on any human being a burden greater than he or she can bear. Later on, the same verse, it continues, and we pray to Allah, our Lord, lay not on us, Rabbana, lay not on us, a burden greater than we can bear. So when Allah has already said in the starting of the verse, Allah will not lay on us a burden greater than we can bear. So why are we praying to Allah, lay not on us a burden greater than we can bear? Here the Mufassirin say, that Allah does not lay on anyone a burden greater than he or she can bear. But what? The human beings themselves, they lay on them a burden. It is like we are digging our own grave. So if the human being goes out of the way to overburden himself or to dig his own grave, then that's not the fault of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So here we find that in depression, it is the human being who doesn't know the value of life. He gets depressed. Some people, their main center is money. So if they go lost in business, they get depressed and they commit suicide. Money is not everything in life. For some people, it is mainly that they want to be very good in profession. And if professionally they, are, they do not excel very well, they get depressed, they may commit suicide. Some people want to pass the examination and if they fail, they commit suicide. So they are actually putting on themselves a burden greater than they can bear. So it's not Allah's fault, it is your fault. If you fail an examination, that's not end of life. If you cannot earn a lot of money, that's not the end of life. In fact, the Prophet said, it is easier for a poor man to go to Jannah than a rich man. Because it is more easy for a poor man to follow the commandments of the glorious Quran than a rich man. So in fact, you should be happy. So your main thing is your perception and your values and what is your center. So if you know what is your center, inshallah, you'll be successful in your life. There will not be any question of depression and there will not be any question of committing suicide. Hope I've answered in brief. As I said, this requires us to deal with. And you can hear my talk on what is the purpose of life 
and my talk on Quran, the path to happiness. Inshallah, this will give more details on the subject.